Let's say we've run over here. Mr. Evans. Thank you, Councilman McGrimm, and that's fine. I think this is a very good dialogue to have. Welcome, everyone. Let me start with just a little background, too, on my history. I served on the Metro Board from 1991 through 1999 for eight years and served as chairman of the board twice. So I know Metro as well as anyone does. And as Craig will tell you, was one of the strongest union advocates when I was on the board dealing with the 13C issue and other things. Really stood up for the employees when they didn't have anybody on the board who was doing that. And so that's important to put on the record because we are clearly on a different opinion on this issue. Public transportation to me is vastly important. It's the future of this region, the future of this city. And there's a tremendous demand for public transportation. As the light rail will show, as these others, the circulator, the blue bus, Metro, everything will show. And so Council Member Graham really has framed this issue. Everything that you've testified to has almost nothing to do with what I'm trying to accomplish here. You know, we have the blue bus going over to Roslyn and coming back. And when the blue bus becomes part of the circulator, which it will, the question is, can the circulator go over to Roslyn and come back? If the legislation doesn't pass, then it won't. And so the blue bus will become the circulator and will run all the routes that the blue bus currently runs, but it won't go to Roslyn. And so the people who are using it today, and I'm telling you, it is your members. It is Local 25 people who are working in restaurants, who are working in hotels, who are working in those retail shops in Georgetown. And when they testify, they can tell you what that ridership is on the blue bus, which is what it was intended to do, was to give access to people who work or live in Georgetown to the Metro stops. That's what we were trying to do. So the only thing you will accomplish by stopping this legislation today is that all of those individuals, many of them your members, just won't be able to ride a bus over to Roslyn. Craig, your suggestion doesn't work for a number of reasons. First of all, what Mr. Graham said, people identify the blue bus as something that really works for them. They don't identify Metro bus, unfortunately, as something that really works for them. We just saw that most recently when we were going to terminate the circulator running from Wisconsin Avenue and M Street up to Whitehaven, because the 38B has that service. People went crazy. They don't want to ride on a Metro bus. They want to ride on the circulator. And why is that? Because it is cleaner, it is reliable, it gets them to where they want to go, and it gets them there faster, quicker, and safer, in their opinion. Now, whether or not that's accurate doesn't matter. It's their view that that is what works for them, not the Metro bus. And that's unfortunate, because I'm a big Metro bus supporter. It's unfortunate that the image of Metro bus is that it is always late, that it is not clean, and it doesn't get you to where you want to go in a timely fashion. And so that's what we're dealing with here, whereas the blue bus and or the circulator does that. So in many ways, it's not reliable. It doesn't provide the services. It's more expensive to ride. So it's all of those things that is not what the people are demanding because they have that service right now, which is why the blue bus was put in place in the first place. We put it there because Metro was not providing that service. Now, Craig, I've looked at your plan, and as you and I talked, we met in my office on the plan. And when we met, as you pointed out, it did not provide all the service that the blue bus did. It didn't quite go to all the places. It doesn't do it fast enough. And what you're saying today is we had more buses. We have less time in between. Maybe we can replicate the service. But always the problem with Metro is, at the end of the day, Metro has enormous financial challenges. And when cuts are made, it's usually in the bus service. And I've got to tell you, the first time that Metro runs into a financial problem, the first service they will cut is this. It will be cut. Oh, it's not true? Okay. Well, you've cut bus service. Are you kidding me? When I was on the board, we cut bus service. Okay. Well, anyway, that could be a possibility that Metro will cut the bus service. And if they were going to cut the bus service, it's probably the first place they would go. And so there's no guarantee we could keep the bus service after we put it in place. So there are a lot of problems with doing that. But having said all that, my goal is as narrow as Jim Graham said what it was. We just want to be able to run the bus currently to where it is and come back. Same thing we're doing right now. Just want to do it 
under the rubric of the circular. All these other issues are important issues, need to be addressed, the wages, everything. But that's not what this bill is dealing with. You can't solve the wage issue. You can't solve all of that on this little bill that just wants to run the bus service across the river. If, though, the position is, well, this is where we draw the line in the sand, we're just not going to let you do it because we want to solve all these other issues and we're just not going to let you do it, then that's where we'll end up. And, again, the service just won't be provided. I used up all my time talking. I must be like Carol Schwartz. So she's not here to defend herself. She's not here to defend herself. And I wanted to get a, Mr. Graham, bear with me. Can I get a response from anybody? Craig, starting with you and Josh and anybody else. Yeah, I just want to address a few of your concerns about WMATA. I mean, what I envision is this service being similar to the Metro Extra service, which people do find very attractive. The S-9 service and the 79 service has been very popular and people do like it. This would be similar service. And the other issue I'd address is on the issue of reductions in bus service. Since you were chair of the Metro board, and I can't remember the exact time period, there was some principles adopted about who controlled what service that Metro operates. And in this instance, the District of Columbia basically determines the level of service for buses that would fall under either what they call local bus service or for, in this instance, what I'm proposing as a reimbursable project, it would solely be under the control of the District of Columbia. Now, that being said, I mean, I think your concerns there are misplaced. So if there was a decision to reduce bus service, it would actually be the District of Columbia that was making that decision. Well, no, that's how it was when I was there. Absolutely. So I just would point that out. 